Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Know what a petard is? I always knew it was something you got hoisted by, you know, hoist by his own petard. But I never knew what it was. So I looked it up. It was an explosive device used centuries ago by warring armies to blow things up. A device which sometimes blew up unexpectedly, thus hoisting the user into the air, to say the least. I mention all this because that's exactly what seems to have happened to a certain middle-aged lady known as Madame Zora. Our mystery drama, Medium Rare, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by George Lothar and stars Joan Lovejoy and Robert Dryden. We're told that there are people who have the power to communicate with the souls of those who have died and passed on into another world. They are known as psychics, sensitives, mediums. Unhappily, there are also people who pretend to have this uncanny ability, fake mediums, who prey upon the credulous, the gullible. One of these, I regret to say, was an otherwise rather decent woman who dubbed herself Madame Zora and who, with the assistance of her husband, Artie, well, listen. I'm sick of the racket, I'm sick of myself, and if you want the truth, Artie, I am sick of you. Oh, come on, Gladys, what I do? Nothing. That's just the trouble. You never do anything. Y you don't even bother to look for a job anymore. What's the sense of looking for what isn't there? Actors are out of work in droves. The trouble is you are always out of work in droves. Okay, so I haven't made it yet. But someday, you mark my word, someday I'll be a star. Oh, yeah, that'll be the day. Right now it is today and Mrs. Norris will be here any minute. Now, Artie, somehow, some way, we've got to keep her coming back for more seances. Well, not a chance, you ask me. Unless the late lamented Mr. Norris tells her where he stashed that million in cold cash and tells her today... She's going to split. We've got to give her an answer. Otherwise, well, I, I just don't know where the next sucker is coming from. Oh, she's here. Into the bedroom, quick. On my way. Uh, you tested the microphone setup. Natch. Well, here goes nothing. Uh, Mrs. Norris, how nice to see you. Come in, come in. Hello. I'm, uh, I'm all ready for you, and... Mrs. Norris, believe me, I have a feeling that today your dear departed husband is going to tell you what you want to know. He'd better. Or it's the last fifty dollars you'll ever get from me, Madam Zora. I have done all in my power to help you. Well, in that case, perhaps I'd better find a medium with more power. Hmm? Shall we get on with it? Uh, yes. Y yes, of course. If you'll just be seated at the seance table. And now, let me turn down the lights. So. And now I will seat myself. And go into trance. Ah. He is here. He is with us. You are there, are you not, Mr. Norris? I am here, Madame Zora. Your wife has joined me once again so she can talk to you. Will you talk with her? Hello, Marie. Herkimer, is that you? Really, you. Would I lie to you, Marie? No, you wouldn't dare. But Madame Zora might. Marie, believe me, you may put your trust in Madame Zora. Herkimer, 
Where is that money? Marie, you know, I've been trying to remember where I put that million for weeks. I've been trying to remember, but... Oh, that does it. I've had enough. You can come out of your trance, Madame Zora, if you are in one, and never again will call I come it, into the... Dal, what? Call it, Who? What? I said call it. Knock what? it off. Who are... Who are you? What? Handsome Harry Harrigan, they used to call me, sweetheart. Uh, but never mind that. You want to know where hubby cribbed the cabbage, right? Cribbed the cabbage? Hid the dough. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you because I'm sick of hearing you ask. Also, I've got some business with Madame Zori, and you're chewing too much beef. Uh, uh, you got something to write with, pencil, paper? Yes, I've got... All right, write this down. Geneva Bank, Switzerland. Got that? Yes. Number 753-8492-W. Got that? Yes, but... That's but the number of the safety deposit box in the Geneva Bank where your hubby hid the long green. Okay. You got what you want? Pay Madame Zora her 50 clams... And split. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes, I would... I don't know what to say. Ex well, thank you, Madame Zora. Thank you. And, uh, not, not at all, not at all. And thank you, Harry. Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Now fade, will you? Fade? Scram. Beat it. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm going. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Hardy. You can come out of the bedroom now. What? What's happening? Who... Who are you? Where are you? I'm here. But you can't see me. I haven't learned how to... what they call materialize yet. Materialize? Are you... Are you telling us that you're a... a real ghost? I'm not whistling Dixie, doll. Artie, I think I'm going to faint. Uh, later. Right now I need you. I need a job done. And I've picked you to do it. What, what, what kind of a job? You'll find out. First, let me give you a little scam about me. Put you in a picture like they say. Before I kicked off a couple of years ago, I was one of the best card shops in the business. Handsome Harry, they called me. Handsome Harry Harrigan, because... <laughs> I do say so myself. I was a pretty cool-looking cat. Not like this creep you married. What do you mean, creep? Go take a look at yourself in a mirror and you'll see what I mean. You want to be an actor, you got to act the part. Look like an actor. Talk like an actor. Dress like an actor. You look, act, talk, and dress like a bum. Oh, I've been uh, telling him that for years, but would he listen to me? Oh, no, not him. He's some just other a... time, Gladys, huh? Right now, i got to fill you in on why I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry, Harry. Uh, I may call you Harry. Uh, handsome. I was always called handsome. <sighs> now, over here, in this other world, I'm doing a stretch in what they call limbo. It's kind of like being in a can in prison, you know what I mean? That's because i got hate in my soul, and i got to get rid of it. Hate in your soul? You got hate? For a gunzel named Tex Morgan, who three years ago took me to the cleaners with a pair of loaded dice and took my mouse along with everything else. But what were you doing with the mouse? A dame, a skirt. Girlfriend. Oh, oh. Dory. That was her name. A looker, a bombshell. Tex, he cops my dough and her. I'm looking for them a whole year to put the blast on them, to get revenge... When my ticket goes bluey, and, well, that's the end of that. So now I'm over here in this limbo place, and I can't get out till I, what they call, purge myself of this hate I got for Tex and Dory. What do you want with us? How are we going to help you get rid of your hate feelings? I'll explain all that when we get to Vegas. Vegas? Las Vegas? There's another Vegas? Yeah, Las Vegas. That's where they are right now, Tex and Dory. 
He's a blackjack dealer at the Pan of Gold. Suppose we don't go. Don't go? Well, you haven't told us what's in it for us yet. What do we get out of all this if, if we help you? It's what you'll get out of it if you don't help me. Like what? Artie! What? The table, my expensive hey. seance table! Oh. I, I've got six payments to go yet! It's buzzing up and down on the floor. It's... Look! Look, it's flying into the air! And... Granny's look out! Oh! Oh. Oh. oh, he's broken my seance table and splinters! Harry, you've wrecked my table with six payments. Are you and Meathead here going to Vegas? Or not going to Vegas? Artie, start packing. <laughs> Dory? Yes, Tex? Clean shirt? Bureau, top drawer. I'll get it. Oh, no, you don't. You just stay right there on the couch. Remember, you're resting for two now. Oh, darling. Having a baby isn't really the big deal you're making out of it. Maybe not, but you are, to me. <laughs> the biggest deal I ever made, honey. Oh, Tex. Oh, uh, baby. Hey. Come on, you got 15 minutes to get over to the Patagon. I'll make it, I'll make it. I wouldn't be late today for anything. Do you really think Roscoe will? Look, would he have called me into his private office yesterday, talked to me like a loving father, if he, if he didn't mean that I'm going to get the nod? Supervisor, head dealer, oh, Tex, you'll be in charge of the whole section. And bringing home a lot more bacon, that's what counts. Especially right now, kid on the way. And the house, the little house. But can we afford it, really, Tex, can we? You want it, don't you? You know I do. And you're going to get it. Oh. You're the one that convinced me to go straight, and Dory, I bless you for it. Hauling down a straight salary, working a blackjack table on the up and up, I'm clean. I am Tex Morgan Citizen. And Dory, it feels good, solid. Then, no regrets. Regrets? Well, being married, kid on the way and all. You shouldn't even ask. <laughs> Wild, man. Wild. You sound like you've never been in a casino before, Artie. Me? <laughs> I've never been west of Hoboken, New Jersey. Gladys, look at this place with you. Roulette wheels, slot machines, craft tables. I don't know what all. Blackjack tables. Like that one over there. With Tex Morgan dealing. That's him? The, the slim one with the glasses? That's him. My first mark, my first step to, like they say in limbo, purge in my soul of hate. <laughs> you ready to go to work, Gladys? Well, what, what do you want me to do? Take a hand at Morgan's table. Play blackjack? I don't know how. I've never played. Artie has, though. How much dough you got on you, Gladys? Would you believe seven dollars? Gladys, by the time you leave that table, Tex Morgan's table, you won't have just seven skins or seventy or seven hundred or seven thousand. You're going to leave that table with seventeen thousand iron men. Seventeen grand? For openers. We'll really start putting the hooks to Tex Morgan tomorrow. Look, I don't get this. I, I don't know the first thing about playing blackjack. But I know everything. Also, I'm a ghost. What's that got to do with it? I can see through anything, including cards. My revenge on Tex and Dory begins. And, baby, let handsome Harry tell you... Revenge is sweet. Handsome Harry Harrigan is taking the wrong route to purging his soul. Madame Zora, fake medium, was, as I said at the outset, hoist by her own petard. And uh, quite honestly, I look forward to Handsome Harry 
unhappy though he may be in limbo, being hoist by his. We'll see when I return shortly with Act Two. Madam Zora, fake medium, finds herself in real and anything but medium trouble, completely under the domination of the ghost of Handsome Harry Harrigan. It seems that when Handsome Harry's uh, ticker went bluey, he found himself in limbo, to move on from which point he must purge his soul of the hate he feels for Tex Morgan and his former girlfriend, Dory. And so... In the gambling casino of the Pan of Gold in Las Vegas. Hit me. Twenty. Eighteen. You win again. Joey, get a rascal quick. Lattice, lay a thousand on the next hand. Okay, Harry. Ma'am? Uh, what? Did you say something? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing. A thousand on the next hand. As it is. Again? Yeah, hit me. Stand pack, Gladys. With 15? He's got 13. Top card's an ace. He'll take it and go over. Ma'am? Um, I- I'll, uh, I'll sit with these. Suit yourself. One more to the house. Hmm. 23. <laughs> Baby! You wanted me, Tex? Uh, yeah, Roscoe. Excuse me, ma'am. I'll be back in a second. Roscoe, this is me. How come she's breaking the house? I don't know. You know? Of course I don't, Roscoe. You don't know this thing? No. You never see her before? No. She's in a house what? How much? Fourteen grand. Close the table. Okay. Table's closed, ma'am. What do you mean, closed? He means closed. Well, now, wait just a minute. Hold I... on. You collect your winnings, then toss Tex a $100 chip. Well, okay. Just give me my winnings. And uh, um, here's 100 for you, dealer. Say, go buy yourself a piece of luck. Uh, go buy yourself a piece of luck. Oh, my God. Was something wrong? You, you've gone white as a ghost. Where'd you get that line, lady? What line? Handing a dealer a hundred skins and saying, go buy yourself a piece of luck. Why? What's it to you? Nothing, only... It was a trademark of a gambler, a big-time swinger. Who died more than two years ago. And then, Dory, then she says, go buy yourself a piece of luck, just the way Handsome used to. But what of it? It's something almost anyone might say. It was Handsome's trademark. And another thing, all through the place, she kept rubbing the right side of her nose with her index finger, just the way Handsome used to. Oh, honestly, Tex, I don't know what you're getting at. I am saying, I'm saying that Handsome Harry Harrigan was at that table, my table. Tex, Handsome's been dead for more than two years. He's come back to get me. Tex! He swore he would with his dying breath, he swore it. Face it, Dory. I cheated him out of a fortune with loaded dice. But that was before you went straight. I wouldn't cut any ice with Handsome, dead or alive. What about you? You left him for me. You deserted him, he said. But he knew better than that. He knew the hell he'd put me through. How many times did he beat me up? How many threats did he make to disfigure me with acid if I ever even looked cross-eyed at another man? I was scared to death of him, Tex. Petrified. Until I fell in love with you and... And I just knew I couldn't go on with him anymore. No matter what he did. Dory, I tell you, he's come back. I know he's come back. Well, I don't believe in ghosts, and I never will. But if they do exist, if Handsome has come back, I'm not afraid of him or what he'll try to do. There's no reason to be afraid of him. Not anymore. How do you figure that? Because we love each other, Tex. 
We love each other deeply and devotedly. Maybe it sounds corny, but from where I sit, love is stronger than hate any day. Artie? (laughs) Artie! What have you done to yourself? What I wanted to do for years, as soon as I got some dough, go out and buy me some new threads. Handsome wasn't telling me nothing I didn't know when he said, I want to be an actor, I got to dress the part. (laughs) Well, I never believed clothes make the man, but they sure make you. I'm more than just a clothes horse, doll. What What in the world? Artie, you sounded just like Handsome Harry. I am Handsome Harry, sweetheart. Just using Stupid's body for a while. You... You are using... Artie's body? Until I learn how to materialize, if I ever do. They tell me on the other side, in that limbo joint, it takes a lot of patience and practice. Yeah, what do they know? They even told me I'm getting this hate out of my soul the wrong way. Well, I haven't wanted to say anything. All right, so uh... don't. They say taking out my hate on Tex and Dory only make my hate grow bigger. Said I gotta find forgiveness in my heart. I told him to take a powder. I know what I'm doing. I hope so. Hey, what's eating you all of a sudden? You won a fortune the past week beating Tex at Blackjack. She came to see me, Dory. Oh? She said Tex was scared. That nose rubbing bit. You know, that he thought I was you returned from the dead. He's right. You are. Same difference, anyhow. Well, I told her I didn't know what she was talking about. So she said, well, anyhow, to please lay off Tex that he was in hot water at the casino because of the losses at his table and... Well, look, handsome. She seemed like an awfully nice kid and a decent kid to me. And it it comes to... I've grown to like Tex Morgan, too. Oh, stop. You're breaking my heart. Handsome, the way I feel now... Eyes up. What I feel is all that matters. And don't forget, if I can take possession of Artie's body, I can do the same with yours. So don't get any fancy ideas about running out on me. You got that? Yeah. Then hang on to it, doll. Hang on real tight. Yeah. Send him in. Sit down, Tex. Uh, Tex, I'm sorry about this, real sorry. I guess you know I was going to make you a head dealer of the blackjack section. You're not? Worse. You're fired. Oh, come on, We can put up with a lot from our dealers, Tex, but one thing we won't put up with is a crooked dealer. I told you when you took me on two years ago that I was playing straight from then on, and I have. Maybe. There's no maybe about it, Roscoe. I'm married to one of the finest women in the world. I've got a kid on the way. We're planning to buy a house here in Vegas. And you're saying that I'd risk all that by going crooked again. I'm talking facts. Sorry, pal. I get my orders from upstairs. You're out of the pan of gold in every other casino in town. He said he'd get me, and he's done it. Artie, you should have bought more luggage after buying all those new suits. How are we going to pack them up for the trip back east? You taking a powder, doll? Oh, it's you, Handsome. You've taken possession of Artie's body again. Yeah, Handsome Harry in the flesh, Artie's flesh. (laughs) What's all this with a packing? We're going back to New York. Who says? I do. I don't, and I give the orders, sweetheart. You and Artie are staying right here in Vegas. But what for? The job you wanted done, it's done. 
Hasn't even started. Now, what do you mean? Getting Tex fired was just the first step. I swore I'd make him regret the day he was born, and that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> he thought he was all set, married to my doll, a kid on the way. Could have been my kid. Handsome, listen to me. What for? All you're going to do is run off at the mouth about forgive and forget. No more arguments, Gladys. I'm following through with every single step in my plan, following through to the hilt. Well, how many steps are there? Three. You took care of the first. Artie will take care of the second. And the third? <laughs> That'll take care of itself. All right, I come here to get step number two set up with Artie. I got to talk to him. Where is he? You're in him. Oh, hey, I forgot. Well, I can't talk to myself, can I? Okay, Artie, take over. Um, uh, you, you say something about buying more luggage, Gladys? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did, Artie, but skip it for now, sweetheart. Sweetheart? Um, Handsome's here. He wants to uh, talk to you. About what? I got a job for you, punk. What kind of a job, Handsome? Acting. You're going to be an actor. An actor? Oh, honey, don't listen to him. He's putting you on. What part do I play? A murderer. A murderer? I... I kill somebody? Not just somebody, Artie. You kill a very special person. You kill the girl who used to be my girlfriend. You kill Dory Morgan. A short act, but a sweet one, Handsome Harry said, believing, as perhaps all too many do, that revenge is sweet. But chemistry teaches the immutable, perhaps divine law, that the sweeter a thing, the more sour it can become, given certain conditions. Personally, I have the feeling that Handsome's sweet revenge is going to turn very sour indeed. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Helpless in the grip of a ghost, the ghost of gambler handsome Harry Harrigan, fake medium Madame Zora, real name Gladys, and her would-be actor husband, Artie, find that they must do whatever Handsome tells them to do. Now, to the horrified astonishment of both, Handsome has told Artie that he is going to murder Dory Morgan. Murder Dory Morgan? Kill that nice, sweet kid? Don't hand me that nice, sweet kid, Jazz. She's a two-time and tramp. No, she is a decent girl. And she's carrying a baby. Tex Morgan's baby. I don't care whose baby it is. Kill her and it's double murder. And I'm not letting Artie do one. Stupid here will do what I tell him and there's nothing you can do to stop it. But why? What are you going to get out of killing Dory? Not what I'm going to get, sweetheart. What Tex is going to get. The misery that'll make him wish he'd never been born. He'll live with that misery inside him. Burning in him, in his gut. For the rest of his life. First, he loves her. And he does, I know that. Second, he'll know he killed her. Not me, him. Every day of his life, he'll think, a thousand times a day, he'll think, if I hadn't stolen her from Handsome, she wouldn't be dead. He didn't steal her. She loved him. Love? You know something? I'm sick of that word. That's all I talk about over here, love. Love? And that's all you talk about lately. You, a two-bit phony medium that sucked in any mark you could find, sucked them dry, even when they didn't have a pot to put a penny in. And you talk to me of love? Okay. I guess I have no right. I... I've got to admit, I don't know much about it. It's new to me, love. What? <laughs> You, you mean... You mean me, Gladys? 
Yes, Artie. I love you. <sighs> well, how about that? You hear that, handsome? How about that? So, don't get all flaked out. I know, dames, and this one you're married to is no exception. Love you. She needs you is all. There ain't a dame in the world. There isn't a person in the world. Wouldn't sell his mother down the drain. You're judging others by what you were, are. Can't you get it through your head? Can't they on the other side somehow beat it into you that there are good people in the world? Honest, generous, decent people? Show me one. What? Show me one. Just one. And maybe then I'll believe. Well, go on, doll. Show me one. Name me one. Dory. Dory? I can prove it to you. Yeah? How? If I do, will you let her off the hook? Will you let her live her life with Tex? Sure. It's a deal, handsome? It's a deal, baby. It's a deal. <laughs> Honey, it isn't the end of the world. It's the end of our plans, our future. It's sure the end of the house. <laughs> I can't afford a mortgage now. So? We live in an apartment. Yeah, and how long will I be able to afford the rent? Tex, I can always get a job to help out. With a baby? Well, there's sitters, people who stay with kids while the... No! Tex! I said no in a minute. And it'd be like the, like the way I was brought up, dragged up. My father couldn't make it either, so my mother went to work, and my grandmother, she took care of me. Then she died, and I went on the streets. It changed my life, Dory. It taught me to cheat and lie and sucker anybody I could until... Until? Until I met you and fell in love with you. <laughs> Uh, may I come in? Well, yes. I, uh, I don't blame you for hesitating, Mrs. Morgan. I, I guess I've kind of put a crimp in your life. Oh, what? Uh, not at all. You don't have to con me. I know the score. Your husband's in trouble, Mrs. Morgan. Bad trouble. Is he? You know it. I don't know anything of the sort. Well, never mind that. What is it you want? I've come here to uh, make you an offer. Offer? In the past week, I won $130,000 from your husband. Well, the, the casino, actually. But he was the dealer, and he lost his job because of it. True. The deal I've come here to make, and no questions now, I'll give you that hundred and thirty grand if if you leave him. You will give me everything you won from Tex if I leave him? What you mean is desert him? Yes. In other words, sell him out for $130,000? Well, that's one way of putting it. Tell me another. Harry was evil. And the man I'm married to is good. As for you, I don't know what you are. I don't think you know what you are. But you'd be smart if you found out. Found out? I didn't know who I was with Harry. But I did. And I do. With Tex. You think you can buy that? With $130,000? You think you can buy it with $130 billion zillion dollars? said I'd give you one answer. Here it is. You can't. <laughs> I was sure I couldn't. Then why did you come here? To prove my point uh, to somebody else. But we had a deal, you, you Welsher. 
I said I'd prove there are good people in this world, decent people capable of love, and I did. She turned down your offer flat. You go and you buy a gun and you kill her, that's all. I'm not buying any gun and I'm not killing anybody, especially a fine human being like Dory Morgan. All right. Now let me tell you two something. Thanks to me, you're worth 130 grand. You're on Easy Street. I can see to it you wind up right back where you started in that crummy New York apartment scrounging for nickels and dimes. Now, what's it to be? As far as I'm concerned, you can take your 130000 and stuff it. Tex and Dory, two people you never met till now, and you'd give up a fortune for them? And for what they stand for. For what they are. She loves him, he loves her. And Love, a stacked deck, a con game. Call it what you want. I'm not killing Dory Morgan. And you neither, huh, stupid? Well, uh... I don't know. Artie! Gladys, baby, I'm sorry, but I've been thinking. I don't want to go back to that lousy New York dump and start living from hand to mouth again. You'll do it? Artie, you'll do it? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Oh, Artie, Artie, Artie. <laughs> Yes? Uh, uh, Mrs. Morgan? Yes? Uh, I, I'm I'm a friend of Texas. Is he home? Well, no, he just left. But you must have just passed him on your way in. Oh, it's too bad. Uh, I, I, I got a job for him. A job? Oh, well. Won't you come in? Uh, th thanks. Sit down. Sit down. Um, wh what kind of a job is it? What is this? A gun. Now listen, I, I I don't like to do this, but I, I gotta. Gotta what? Kill you. Kill me? Yeah, I, I, I gotta do it. I got no choice, you see. It it, it, it won't hurt. I, I'll, I'll make it quick so it don't hurt. And, and I'm... And, I can't do it, Harry. I can't do it. I can. I can easy. You... Your voice. It's... It's changed... You sound like... like... Handsome Harry Harrigan, Dory. Oh! You're all flame. Handsome Harry. But you... you're dead. Only my body, doll. The spirit, it don't die. It goes on living till it gets itself purged or something. That's why I'm here. Inside this creep's body. My spirit using his body to kill you, you two diamonds. Harry, and Harry. I won't make it quick. I'm going to make it slow. And very painful, doll. Very. Oh, Harry. Harry, no. I, I, I don't care about me, but the baby. I'm carrying a baby. His baby. It doesn't matter whose. It's a baby. It's a new life. Oh, Harry, no. I'm telling you, stand Harry, still. Harry, listen to me. Please listen. I fell in love with Tex. I couldn't help myself. I couldn't stand it anymore with you. The beatings and the threats. If I'd loved you, Harry... You did. No. You loved me. Never. I wanted to. I, oh, I wanted to, but you never gave me the chance. Why... I gave you everything you've asked for. Clothes, furs, jewels, no, everything. Everything but love, because you you never had any of that in you to give. What? A lot, you know. A hell of a lot, you know. You beat me. You threatened me. Because I loved you. Because I was scared of losing you. I seen you flirting with another guy. Never, I then never. Then it would send me up the wall. I'd make love to you, and you were like ice, like ice, and it would drive me bananas. I wanted you. I needed you. I never once, never once, 
Did I ever have you? Harry. I'm sorry I beat you. I'm sorry I threatened you, but I couldn't help myself because the thought of losing you. I knew I'd die if it happened. And I did. Oh, Harry. So, so you owe me, doll. For what you did to me, you owe me. And you're paying. You're paying in full. You're paying now. No! Harry? You dropped a gun. I can't kill you. I... I still love you. And, and, and maybe, maybe I love you a little now. What is it, Harry? They're, they're calling to me. They're, they're guys and dolls in limbo. Huh? What? Uh, <laughs> that's out of sight. I mean, say that. That's really something else. What? Harry, what is it? Dory. Dory. Believe it or not. I'm purged. <laughs> Love, hate, two sides of the same coin, they say. If that is so, perhaps I can be forgiven for saying that handsome Harry really flipped. Anyhow, he's purged. I'll be back shortly. You'll be interested to learn that Tex found another job, and he and Dory are deliriously happy with their baby boy, Harry. Gladys and Artie live in the country. They bought a house and barn, in which Artie stages and stars in his own plays. As for handsome Harry, he went on finally to a higher plane, wherever that is. Our cast included Joan Lovejoy, Robert Dryden, Mason Adams, and George Petrie. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>